The demon prince goes to the academy captor and perhaps it was because the questions were too bizarre, the atmosphere should have been heavy. But it didn't feel that way at all, instead of the demon king and the black order fanatics, it still felt like a student-teacher relationship. But they couldn't continue this conversation forever. Before I share information about Cantus Magna, there are a few things I'd like to know, ask away, if it's a question I can answer. I will. You're not a magician, are you? Eppenhauser, he is not a magician. So, the first Black Order member I encountered, right after killing Aaron Mead, couldn't have been Eppenhauser. As for the person I met during the cross-dressing contest, it could have been Eppenhauser or not. The magician is Mazer. Maslang, the class homeroom teacher, it's not like the class teacher is a member of the Black Order and Mazer. Maslang is a member of Cantus Magna, is it? Why would he join the Magic Order if he's not a magician? There's no reason it has to be a magician only, that's all Eppenhauser had to say. I don't know the conditions for joining the Black Order, but the previous Aaron Mead was just the tip of the iceberg. I don't know what rank Eppenhauser holds within the Black Order, but it's certainly not the same as the tip of the iceberg since he revealed his face and made contact with me. What's the relationship between Cantus Magna and the Black Order? Cantus Magna wants the Order's elixir, that's why they relentlessly try to track us down. Are there actual battles taking place? Yes, the history of power struggles between the Order and Cantus Magna is quite deep. The long-standing conflict between Cantus Magna, which had coveted the elixir, and the Black Order was extensive. This means that Cantus Magna would be the ones attacking the Black Order. The Black Order was known for its sinister and dangerous magic, while Cantus Magna was known for its positive image as elixir hunters who ambushed such magicians. Of course, it's true that the Black Order possesses dangerous magic and Cantus Magna attacks them. So it's not as if incorrect information has spread, has spread. However, what wasn't known was that Cantus Magna's actions were no different from robbery against the Black Order. That's why one of the Black Order's goals was to find and destroy the Cantus Magna's base, which coveted their elixir. So, what's the information on Cantus Magna? It's the reason they're collecting the elixir. At that, Ippenhosa stopped walking and stared at me intently. Their goal is to complete an artifact called Akasha. The Black Order might have already grasped this information since Antarianus knew it. He stared at me for a moment and then spoke briefly. Akasha. I've never heard that tale before. Eppenhauser nodded silently. It was clear that even the Black Order had no knowledge of this information. And this raised another question. The Black Order, which had been opposing Cantus Magna for a very long time had been unaware of Cantus Magna's true intentions all this time, and Tyrionus spoke as if he had only briefly entered and exited Cantus Magna. If Antarianus was able to learn of Akasha's existence from his short-term activities, it made no sense that the Black Order, even as enemies, hadn't known about it until now. Antarianus could have been active in Cantus Magna for much longer than he had said. Where did you get that information? Master Eppenhauser asked. If Antarianus had been active in Cantus Magna for a long time, he might have hunted the Black Order under Cantus Magna's name. In, in. Soon, even if it happened decades or centuries ago, Antarianus might be considered an enemy that the Black Order would want to eliminate. If a former insider of Cantus Magna provided the information, it was possible they would try to kill that source. I'm sorry, but I cannot reveal that. I couldn't afford to cause tension in an already uncertain alliance. If we cannot be sure of the source, the credibility of the information will inevitably suffer. I don't think this information is entirely accurate either. In the end, it was possible that Antarianus had lied to me, and given that he wasn't entirely trustworthy, the story, the story about Akasha might not be true either. However, I do know that Cantus Magna's goal is to complete an artifact named Akasha. They say it's an artifact that can contain magic. I don't know what will happen once it's completed, but it certainly won't be ordinary, and, among the numerous magics contained within, there might be something I desire, that's what I believe, at least, I didn't know exactly what Akasha was, so my words were like grasping at straws, however, considering the Black Order didn't know about Akashi either, 
it was clear that Cantus Magna had kept their secret well guarded for a long time, except for the one slip-up involving Antirianus. Hum, this unexpected information requires verification, Master Eppenhauser spoke. I don't know about all types of ancient artifacts either, so I will look into whether the Order has any related information. In fact, Eppenhauser was a member of the Magic Alliance but was not a magician himself. Even though he didn't know the exact location of the Order's headquarters, there must be more information there. Does the Order know how to contact Cantus Magna? If I knew an easy way, I wouldn't have contacted you. This answer was expected, so it wasn't too disappointing. There were times when they found us, and times when we found them. But just as they couldn't pinpoint our core, we couldn't pinpoint theirs either. There may have been small skirmishes and isolated battles, but there had never been a full-scale war. Cantus Magno would surely like to raid the Black Order's headquarters, seize all the magic they possess, and fill Akasha and fill Akasha with it, and the Black Order would want nothing more than to raid Cantus Magna's headquarters and annihilate those pesky adversaries. Yet, such events hadn't transpired so far. You've probably heard rumors that the Black Order conducts wicked dark magic or experiments. Yes, could it be? Those rumors are nothing but false information spread by the Order itself to lure Cantus Magna into a specific area or location. It was almost unbelievable that all those bizarre rumors about the Black Order were fabricated by the Order itself. They would even go as far as to tarnish their own reputation in order to kill their enemies. The Black Order was willing to tarnish their image to annihilate their enemies, spreading strange false rumors they had created to draw Cantus Magna in. Did that mean there were no actual instances of civilian massacres and such? So they didn't actually use things like forbidden magic. Of course, to bait them, magic they aren't aware of must actually be performed or exist in that location. They aren't the type to bite at just any bait. The outcome was sometimes successful, sometimes a failure. But ultimately, we couldn't reach their core. Eppenhauser quietly gazed at the trees lining the street. I won't say that there haven't been any casualties caused by the Order. Some forbidden magic inevitably involves sacrifices. Sacrifices, however, there's no reason for me to explain that to you. Eppenhauser stopped talking, seemingly thinking it odd to justify casualties to a demon lord infiltrating the human realm. No, first cross-dressing, now being treated as an evil being. It's absurd, anyway. I don't know the Black Order's true purpose, however. It was clear that due to the endless struggle with Cantus Magna, the annihilation of Cantus Magna had become one of the Black Order's top priorities. Putting their true objective on hold, it wasn't much different from Antirianus' situation, losing forbidden magic as bait to lure Cantus Magna. There's the cooperation of the Black Order, who have been fighting Cantus Magna for a long time, time, time. They don't fall for every bait, and if their goal is to complete some sort of artifact, setting the wrong, overly large bait could result in them completing the artifact. We also had to consider the possibility of failing to respond to Cantus Magna's attack, as long as we didn't know what Akesha was. Putting up a huge bait that they couldn't resist might lead to even more unforeseen situations if we failed. First and foremost, it seemed urgent to find out what Akesha was. I established a cooperative relationship with the Vampire Council. Following that, I also built a cooperative system with the Black Order. It was quite a shock to learn that the Order's representative was none other than Professor Epinoza. Epinoza. Epin While each situation carried its own anxiety, everything began to roll slowly, according to my intentions. It wouldn't be strange for my identity to be revealed at any moment now. After all, I had no choice but to expose myself in order to join hands with numerous groups. Professor Epinoza silently watches me. Reinhardt. He calls me Reinhardt. Not Velia, of course. He probably doesn't know that my father, the Demon King, shares the same name, Velia. So he addresses me as such. Epinosa looks at me quietly and speaks. I can't tell what emotions lie behind his emotionless gaze, however. He called me Reinhardt. Not the son of the Demon King. Of the Do not make foolish choices. In that one sentence, I felt many emotions that I could not discern from his expression. What does he mean by a foolish choice? It seems I might already be making them. He still seemed to think of me as his student. 
I couldn't tell what Afinasa or the Black Order wanted. I didn't know what they expected from me, however, since he still treated me as a student. Yes, Professor, I treated him as my professor as well. Well, the connection to the Black Order lies with Professor Afinasa. I don't know how he communicates with the Order, or what kind of activities he's involved in. Although the settings I've written are factual, the unwritten parts are filled with things I don't know. Things. Professor Epinaza is a patriot. It is uncertain whether his patriotic nature is related to the Black Order, however. The Black Order definitely cannot be an anti-imperial organization. After all, my description of Professor Epinaza as a patriot must be true. But if they are a pro-imperial organization, why would they spare me? Do they think my existence could somehow help the Empire? For now, they seem to be extremely cautious when it came to dealing with me, to the extent that they would rather cooperate with me to annihilate Cantus Magna. I was not yet completely out of their Black Order's sight. Professor Epinosa's advice is not to make foolish actions. It could be interpreted that depending on my actions, the Black Order's response or attitude towards me could change. Professor Epinosa will report to the Order's headquarters, or something similar, about Akashi. And if there's any clue to be found, he will find it. If not, I will lure Cantus Magna out using the gold mine the Black Order has or the gold mine I have as bait. I can prepare a gold mine of a tremendous scale that they will have no choice but to fall for then. A situation akin to a full-scale war would unfold, either the Black Order and my forces will be shattered, or Cantus Magna will be. One of two situations would unfold, and Akasha's fate would be determined then. Time passed. Amidst anxiety and impatience, patience, Hill have you been acting a bit strange lately? During the school break, Lyanna de Grants, who had been staying at the dormitory for a few days and then going back to the Duke's residence, initiated the conversation. What do you mean? Well, you always seem a bit off, but recently, it's like... him. Lyanna looked at me with her arms crossed and muttered. Should I say you're like water mixed with alcohol, or alcohol mixed with water? Although it wasn't a fitting analogy for someone her age, it wasn't too bizarre considering it was Lyanna, who was most likely drinking alcohol at home. I guess I'm just a bit tired, really. What are you doing that's so exhausting during the break? Just relax. I'll manage. Well, suit yourself. With that, Lyanna went somewhere else. It wasn't necessarily because of training, of course. I wasn't not doing it either. The anxiety that this life would someday come to an end, it seemed that was what made my recent behavior appear somewhat odd. Did you ask me something? No, it's nothing, like when I just stared intently at Ellen's face without doing anything during training. What? What is it all of a sudden? Do you have something to say? <laughs> oh. No. Ah, you startled me or when I suddenly patted Harriet on the shoulder while having various conversations at the Magic Research Club's mansion, causing her to jump in surprise. Reinhardt, let's go on a date. Sure. Who? Where should we go? Oh, um, oh. Oh, I'll think about it now. When Olivia unexpectedly proposed a date that I would normally reject, I simply agreed without hesitation. Even in my own opinion, I had indeed been acting like a screw was loose.